Legend has it that centuries ago, a wealthy middle-aged man had reached the pinnacle of financial security, and he turned to his first love. This guy loved horses, and his goal was to discover the finest breed of horse in all the world. This was his plan. He was looking for young men who were single, available to travel, men of character, substance. He did his homework. He carefully scrutinized as he investigated which men he could trust. When he found guys that he wanted, he began to compensate them very generously. And then he himself trained them what to look for in a great horse, a thoroughbred. It took him several months. He couldn't make a mistake here. He had to have them ready. When he was satisfied that he had done everything he could to prepare them, he dispatched them into all the world as they knew it at that time. Their assignment, come back with the 100 finest horses in all the world. They were instructed that when you find the horse that meets the description, you bid on it until you get it. You do not get outbid. Don't come back without that horse. These guys were gone six months. When they came back, they really knew in their hearts they had found the 100 finest horses that were out there. He paid them off, dismissed them, and then he himself, taught these horses. He knew how to train them so that he could get them to maximum physical condition. He knew how to feed them so that they'd have total nourishment. But watch this. Above all, he taught them to come at the master's command. Over and over again, in all different circumstances, he would let out the command until he was satisfied he had done everything he could do. Now came time for the final test. He took these horses into an area where the temperature at night did not go below 100 degrees. They were positioned where there was a corral. They were all harnessed in that corral, overlooking a creek of cold, gushing, bubbling water. He gave them nothing to eat or drink for 24 hours. He knew horses. He took them right to their breaking point. When he knew, can you in your mind's eye see these horses looking at that water? They're all in the same spot, gazing at that water. When he knew they couldn't take it another minute, he positioned himself so he was 100 feet from the water. They're 100 yards from the water. He's 100 feet. He instructed them to bust open the corral gates. Can you in your mind's eye See these 100 horses stampeding from that water. Now came the test. When they approached him, he let out the command that he had trained them under. You know what happened? 99 of those horses went directly into that water. One horse obediently obeyed the master. And history records we have the Arabian strain the finest breed of horse in all the world today, arguably. John Embry. He's one in a hundred. John Embry has pedigree that this university champions and has longed for. John Embry, not only that, but if you look carefully at his coaching staff, they're made up of one in a hundred guys. See, that's what happens. When you get a guy that's a one in a hundred, he knows what to look for. He knows who to surround himself with. It's just a matter of time, but can I tell you something? It took three to four years for the Arabian strain to spawn the new breed. It's gonna take time, y'all. This is their first real chance to recruit a class. This class right here 
has the pedigree that we're looking for. It's a start in the right direction. Now, consider the University of Alabama. Bama has won two national championships under Nick Saban. Alabama, according to the newspapers, just had the top recruiting class in the country, 13 of the top 150 players. But watch this now. You know what's unique about Alabama? Nobody can make this claim. At their spring game, they average 93,000 people. The appetite, the desire for college football in Alabama, it's incredible. I want to suggest to you, we can do something here. We're not going to get 93,000 to the spring game. But we can do something if everybody realizes that we all need to participate. We all need to join in. I want to suggest to you a plan. The first part of the plan has to do with the spring game. Mike Bone has made available the bubble that's on the practice field. We're told that we can seat 750 in that bubble. What I envision, the spring game this year is on April the 14th from 4 to 6 p.m. I envision 750 buffs to the bone in that bubble. We're going to ask Charles Johnson and Alfred Williams and others to come and talk what Jeremy was talking about, the, what breeds what's been bred here and where this thing can go. We're going to put on a program for those that attend that is going to have you wired, fired, and inspired. <laughs> now, before you leave, you're going to receive this notice here. And it talks about that rally. It's going to cost you $10. Pasta Jay's going to feed us. You're going to eat royally, as much pasta as you want. We're going to give you a feast and then a fix, a football fix. It's going to cost you 10 bucks. that's all. However, as you'll see on this notice, if you will bring a post prospective Buff Club member, it's free. Bring somebody who wants to be a part of this and wants to contribute and join and be part of the future here at Colorado. So I call your attention to that. And then secondly, in the fall, we're going to have 10 gatherings probably on a Thursday night. On this Thursday night, we're going to get the first bank center, which is close enough to you in Denver to come towards Boulder. OK? We need everybody. We're going to put 5,000 in there. Every Thursday night, we're going to ignite and unite the Buffalo family. We're going to parallel whatever they're doing in Alabama, and we're going to generate a support system that's unprecedented. Nobody does anything like this. So here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to sign up for the spring game rally, but I'm asking you to look forward to the fall when we fill up that first bank center, and it's going to do wonders for recruiting. It's going to be a tremendous motivational asset to this coaching staff. They're going to want to bring players that are getting ready to play that weekend to feel what's inside us, because this is going to be a rally. And so we need to do something, you all, to get behind these guys as we go into the Pac-12. Lastly, I want to mention that you may have noticed that my grandson Derek is on that list.
Well, I would like to tell you that Derek is faster than a speeding bullet, <laughs> and he leaps tall buildings in a single bound. But after Embry gets a hold of him, he will. John Embry, folks.